Today we're talking about a 2G calibration, or 2G roll check, or 2G roll cal. There are a few different ways to describe it, but it's a very simple test you can run on your accelerometer. Now, we typically see this being helpful in three scenarios that our customers encounter. The first one being, maybe you've set up the sensor for the first time. You feel pretty confident in the settings you're using, but you want an empirical or a sanity check to make sure the sensor is doing what it should. The second one might be you've run a test, but you're a little curious or a little suspicious about the data you're looking at. So you're double checking your setup. You wanna make sure everything's working and one of the things you're going to check is this accelerometer. The third one might be that you've got some old hardware and you just have pieces of documentation for it or the sensor you have or the calibration sheet on hand is pretty old. Similarly, you might be someone that was handed a bunch of hardware that you're trying to work with for the first time. You have most of the pieces there, but you're sort of guessing at the sensitivity, or well, the best you have is a nominal one. You can use the 2G roll cal check here to calibrate and fine adjust. The one thing I wanna say here, if you're in this group, we don't recommend this instead of getting an official calibration. That's the best way to make sure you can be confident in getting meaningful data from that sensor throughout your tests. But if you're running something on the bench or doing low G measurements, you can get some useful data using that method as well. Now what makes this test great is that it's a principle. You don't need a specific manufacturer, a specific model, not at all. You just need an accelerometer that you think is set up correctly for the most part, and you know that it's healthy. Otherwise, you just need to make sure you're on planet Earth. If so, this check will work for you. Now how do we run a 2G roll check? Well, we'll need our accelerometer, of course, and we'll also need a flat level surface. We also want to be looking at it in oscilloscope mode, a real-time view, however you're looking at it after you've set it up in your software and you, you know that it's healthy. So for right now, I'm going to use this table. It's a flat level surface, and it's important that you have that to make sure you're doing this accurately. You'll take your accelerometer. In this case, I'm using the DTS A64C, and this is a single axis accelerometer, but you can use yours. You can use a triax. Just keep in mind, you want to watch the geometry and make sure you're looking at the right plane based on how it measures. The first step you want to do is, since you're in oscilloscope or real-time mode, is zero it. You want to first take the accelerometer and place it on the flat level surface so that its reading axis is perpendicular to the floor, or perpendicular to gravity. So for this one, I'll lay it flat on the table here. Get it as flat as you can. Now when you look at real-time, you might see a little bit of a level. It might not be exactly zero. It might be a little bit of noise. And that's not necessarily a problem. It could be for that accelerometer, that's normal. They're not all gonna be exactly perfectly zero, but we will zero it here. Once you've done that, you'll see close to zero in real time. We'll then rotate the accelerometer into the two different directions. So let's say that positive happens to be this way. I'll take the accelerometer and I'll face it up. And this is just the positive direction. It's just the polarity of the sensor, something you can probably change based on what software you're using. But if this is positive, we should see 1G. If we rotate it the opposite way, we should see negative 1G. And altogether, that's 1G at the top, 1G at the bottom, and that's two total. So if that's what you're seeing on your screen, you know that you've run a successful 2G test. Now, it might be a little surprising to see any sort of reading at all. It might seem a little counterintuitive. After all, this is an accelerometer. Shouldn't it be measuring movement and G's? If it's sitting on the table, why are we seeing anything? Well, there's two ways to think about it. Number one, from just pure physics, we're all experiencing gravity, and the accelerometer is too. So that's what you're seeing, the 1G pull from gravity itself. Another way to think about it is if you're holding a weight, outstretched, and let's say it's a dumbbell, and it's pretty heavy, almost too heavy for you to hold up, so you can just barely keep it balanced, not moving. Everybody else in the room, I'd look over and say, it doesn't look like much is happening here. But you know darn well you're putting in work to keep this thing up. You have to lift upwards for it to stay exactly where it is. Well, the same thing's happening to your accelerometer. While it's sitting there not moving, there's something that has to keep it from not moving. So if we think of that accelerometer as the weight in your hand being held up, and let's say that this way is positive, if it happens to be positive in that direction, you'll see a positive polarity in your real-time view. And if the accelerometer is rotated, but again, we're still holding the weight right here, well, same thing. Now it's just pointing negative. 
So that explains the direction you're seeing, but what is the quantity? Well, it's not moving because it's sitting on the table, it's not floating up, it's not going up into the air, and it's not going down to the center of the Earth, so it's staying just level, perfectly counteracting gravity. So, 1G. Now, if you're in this third group, where you're working with older hardware, or maybe you just don't have all the documentation that you need, and you need to find and adjust the sensitivity you have, you can still use the 2G roll cal to get some good results. If you're looking at what should be 1G and you saw a number that isn't quite there, let's say 0.6, so noticeably below but not terrible, and let's say you rotate it into the negative region and you see negative 0.6, well the good news is it's linear, but we've got some adjustments to make. Now again, before we make these fine adjustments, I want to make clear again this is not the same thing as getting an official calibration. And that's something we strongly recommend for running all of your tests and having confidence in your results. But for getting some meaningful data on your bench, in particular low G measurements, this will work. So if you're seeing 0.6, what you want to adjust is the sensitivity you're using. If you make that adjustment closer to what it needs to be, you'll start seeing the readings that you expect. Now you might wonder, well, what kind of adjustment should I make to sensitivity? And it might be tempting to think, well, 0.6 is low, so my sensitivity should go higher, right? But it's actually the inverse, which seems a little counterintuitive. The fastest way to think about it is your sensitivity is millivolts per either volts per EU or just EU. So your millivolts is actually the numerator, which flips things for what you need to do in terms of change. Another way to think about it is this. Your sensitivity is what you're telling the software you are requiring. We need this many millivolts before we report 1 EU, or in this case, 1G. And let's say your sensitivity was 100 millivolts, so we need 100 of them to see 1G. Well, if you're looking at real time and you see 0.6, when you know that you should see 1, we're reading too low, well, we're asking for too much. 100 millivolts, that's too many. So you want to bring that number down. Once you've improved that number and brought it down appropriately, you'll start seeing those readings as you would expect. And if you're wondering how to do that quickly or what sort of formula can I use to get there, well, you can just use percent error. So if you had, let's say, a 40% error in what you saw versus real time compared to your 1G roll, you can use that and apply it to your sensitivity. Now, are you adding 40% or minusing? Well, it depends on what we just talked about, where your reading's low or high. You're not gonna nail this on the first try, at least not likely. Again, you're looking at real time. The signal might be moving a little bit. We're calling it 0.6, but it's probably not 0.60000. So expect to do this a few times. But once you've done that, you'll start seeing this expand out to get 1G positive and 1G negative. And now you know you're in a lot better shape. Now there's actually a quicker way to run a 2G roll cal. If you take your sensor and actually rotate it so it is acting up and down, and let's just say you've rotated it so that it's looking in the negative direction, you can zero it here. Now, if it was supposed to read negative one and you've zeroed it, what the software is doing is adding one G to make it zero. So you'll see a flat line, roughly zero Gs. And then if you rotate it back to positive one, well now it'll show positive two. Now, it's just as valid as the previous method, but this is a little faster, and you can see a very simple pulse that goes to two G on your oscilloscope. So it's a faster way to do it. If you're running this test on a bunch of different accelerometers, it can save you some time and you can tell somebody, here is a 2G roll and it's reading 2Gs right here. Just make sure you make a note as to how you did it and how you zeroed so people have confidence in what they're looking at. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. You can check out our full library of technical videos and head to dtsweb.com to see our Help Center where we have documentation, user manuals, help center items that can help you apply all of this knowledge to whatever software or hardware you're using, or submit a help center ticket to get some more direct support.